OK, I think this is the final video from me. You've probably had enough of me already. Um, last couple of questions. Uh, why has almost every service been outsourced and very little is done? But when things go wrong, the council does not take any responsibility. OK, well, taking that last point first, since 2019, we have been doing our best as the independent coalition uh, to be better at communicating and taking responsibility and saying sorry when things have gone wrong. When some of the road measures implemented in the first uh, when the first lockdown was eased were clearly not working in the city, we listened to feedback and we got them removed quickly. We've also been working really hard uh, throughout the problems on the Found Hope road repairs to communicate with the parish councils involved and to apologise to local residents for long delays in getting the road open again. And that's just a couple of examples. There's lots of others. Uh, the, as Cabinet, we are sending a clear message to officers that the Council must be more open and transparent and be quicker to admit when mistakes have occurred. The message may not be getting through everywhere and we can always do better. If you want information from the Council, there are web pages on the Council's website which give you options for how to obtain this. And there's also a complaints process which is up there if you need to use that to raise an issue formally. But you can always contact your ward member as the first instance for information and advice. So on to outsourcing. There has been a fashion to outsource services in local government which started in the Thatcher era and has continued. In search of savings and efficiencies, private businesses were seen as better able to deliver services than local government itself. And many councils now commission most of their services from the private sector, with a profit being made for shareholders from the, service, uh, from the services paid for with public money. In some areas, this has proved the right thing to do, and the private sector has found ways to do more for the same money or to do the same for less money. But this isn't always the case, and since coming into office in May 2019, we have committed to return a number of service areas um, partially back into um, council operation. So the council will be shortly building um, its own care home facility so that we aren't forced to pay the prices that private sector care companies charge to take care of our most vulnerable residents. And we've committed to build an additional two and a half thousand publicly owned affordable homes in Herefordshire because private housing developers aren't building enough affordable homes to meet the local need and our house prices are so high compared to wages and social housing landlords don't have the funds to build all the homes that are needed either. And we're also changing the way that the council buys its services to make it easier for small local businesses to be suppliers to the council and to make a positive effort to spend public money locally with local businesses so that we generate social value in Herefordshire and keep local people's money circulating much more tightly in the economy. Um, final question then. Now that the bypass has been cancelled, what is the money that you have been given to build it going to be spent on? OK, no money has been given to the council for building the bypass. I'll say that again. No money has been given to this council for building the bypass. It's an urban myth. It's fake news. However, over £11 million, which could and in my view should have been spent on maintaining the county's existing road network were spent by the Conservatives over a 10 year period trying to build a sound business case for the South Y transport link and for the Western Relief Road, which together are loosely referred to as the Hereford Bypass. However, the Conservatives never managed to get that business case approved after 10 years trying. And following a recent review of the city's transport options, both road schemes were considered to be undesirable and undeliverable. A single bottleneck bridge in the city is, however, unacceptable. Uh, it's not resilient 
and it doesn't give people who live in the city or travel through it the travel options that they need. And we've committed to press ahead with providing a second city bridge between Rotherwas and the Ledbury Road um, just beyond Tupsley and reintroducing a well-used and much-loved hopper-style bus service to help people in the city to move about swiftly and cheaply and also to provide an extended and improved off-road walking and cycling route network uh, to reduce the traffic generated particularly by school travel. Government is announcing grant funding for such sustainable travel schemes all the time now, particularly um, to help with regeneration uh, post-COVID. And we shall be using this and other funding to make improvements to the city's travel options, um, which will be delivered faster and more cheaply than those cancelled road schemes. And that's it from me. Um, I've really enjoyed um, doing these sessions for uh, Hereford Voice. I'd, I'd like to thank um, everybody um, involved in managing the group for running the councillor sessions and for group members for asking questions. Hopefully there'll be more councillor sessions in the future um, and, you know, get in touch with us. Keep asking those questions. We're really happy to answer them where we can. And if we don't know, we'll go away and find out. OK, thanks ever so much. And that's me signing off. Bye-bye.